Welcome back. So uh, it's, we're gonna follow on with whatever we where we left off. We left off on the types of business organizations. Now we're gonna talk about A2 stakeholders in business organizations. And before I say anything further, all the rights and reserves goes to Richard Clark who prepared these amazing notes and I'm just following on his footsteps and just explaining you guys on his behalf. Thank you, Richard. Moving on, talking about stakeholders. Like I spent a, a, a very long time explaining what stakeholders are in the previous video as, uh, with, with the previous video as well. And the stakeholders are the people uh, or individuals or a group of people or literally anyone in this world who are affected or who can affect your organization whom you expect something from or who expects something from you. There are bazillions of different things people can talk about stakeholders. Just a simple thing that I would want to tell you what stakeholders could really be are the people who are affected or who affect you in any certain way. Anybody who breathes, who lives are stakeholders, right? Moving on. Now, it's very important for the organizations to know what stakeholders do they have. Like some people will say, hey, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what stakeholders are there. I don't know my stakeholders. Dude, you need to know your stakeholders. Because if you don't know your stakeholders, how are you going to move further? How would you know whom you're going to address your things to, right? Now, stakeholders could be um, internal, could be external, could be connected. Now, I'm going to discuss these further later in our course. I'm gonna, not going to say what they are, but these are three different types of stakeholders that I'll be talking about in a few minutes. Uh, now stakeholders like as you can see for one organization they have consumers suppliers all these type of people are the stakeholder like i said everybody is a stakeholder people who buy things from you and people who do not buy things from you and uh, since i just got uh, a hint over here as you should you guys should go here and do some quiz whenever you go through one slide okay open the website uh, listen to the lecture and whenever I'm about to click this button over here, you stop it, you do the questions first. If you do a question and you feel like it doesn't make any sense or it's wrong, I hope it's not wrong, but if it doesn't make any sense to you, just contact me with that question and I'll come back to you guys. Moving on, we talk about agency relationship. Now, agency is defined in a relationship to a principle. Like, uh huh, what? That confuses me. Actually, owner is the principal. He lets someone else do the work. Now that person is a director, a manager of the business. Now what I'm trying to see over here is that agency concept means there. Now who's the owner? The shareholders. Who's the person running the business? The directors. I just explained this in the previous lecture. So that's what agency really is. An agent is the person who's doing the, your work on your behalf for someone else. I, my teacher gives me an assignment to do. Now, actually, this is illegal. Don't do that. But my t teacher gives me this assignment to do and I approach someone on Facebook and I say to that guy, dude, uh, can you do this for me for uh, 10 bucks? He'll say, yeah, why not? Free money, dude. Yeah, give it to me. I'll just use mine. I'll change your name over there and I'll just use that, you know. You, he gets 10 bucks for free. What can he do with 10 bucks? Yeah, McDonald's. Let's go. Now, principal and agents, just go through this. It's not really a big deal. It's just something that you need to know what agents and principals are. It's just a very confusing, stupid idea of what principal is. Principal will appoint the agent. The agent will work on their behalf. If they don't work on their behalf, they fire them. It's, uh, it's just boring. Moving on to internal connected and external stakeholders, one of my favorites in stakeholders. The first time when I uh, was studying ACC myself, I, I, went, I came through this a, a internally connected and extended external shareholders. I'm sorry, I snapped there for a little bit. My train of thoughts just left me at one station and went without me, but I, I got a chance to grab it. Uh, but okay, stakeholders. What are stakeholders? I talked about it. But now we know we have different types of stakeholders. Now we need to categorize them in internal, external, and connected. What are internal stakeholders? The people who work inside the company. I'm a stakeholder of the people I work for in my organization. You are your company's stakeholder, internal stakeholders, the people who are involved inside of the business. 
they are internal stakeholders. Why are the stakeholders? What are they trying to get? Now, I'm an employee of the company. What? How am I a stakeholder? How am I an ex internal stakeholder? I want the money of the company. I want the salary every month. I want bonuses. I want promotions. I want my own name card with the company written on it. You know, those type of things. Now, what happens when you don't take care of your employees? They leave you. They are dozens of different companies in the world they will leave you for a better company so be careful connected shareholders more interesting now these are the people who are somehow connected to you they're not working for you but they're still connected to you now who are these people who do come in your mind when you talk about the people who are connected to you somehow yes the shareholders number one Shareholders are the people who are connected to you. They can't do anything to you. They can't just come and say, hey, dude, you cannot put your table like this. Move your table there. And you'll ask, why? I'm the shareholder of the company. I'll do whatever I want. Sir, how many shares do you own? I own five shares of the company. Sir, we have five million in total. You don't even count anymore. Go to hell. Simple. I mean, just a point of fact that shareholders can't do anything to you. And also they're connected. But just be careful, don't piss everybody off at the same time because if you do that, everybody would leave and you'll go bankrupt. Customers, for example, they are very important people in the organization. Uh, suppliers are connected stakeholders. All these type of people, your banks are connected stakeholders. Everyone you can think of who's not working in the company are your connected, your customers are connected stakeholders. The people doing window shopping are connected stakeholders for God's sake. The pets coming with your customers in the shop are connected stakeholders. You know, we'll discuss later who should we take into account, who should we care for, who should we not care for. But these are stakeholders are everywhere. Finally, you have external shareholders, people uh, uh, who are just external. They're not connected to you. You don't care about them. They don't care about you. They're not working for you. You're not working for them, but they're there somewhere. Like the government, you're working in Finland, you are a Finnish company, and that sounds funny, but okay, you're working in Finland and the Finnish government is your external shareholder, right? I'm sorry, external stakeholder. Sorry about that again. But as you can know, these are types of the people and who could else be? Then, okay, if you're working in... Uh, a, a, a car industry or a petroleum industry oil and gas industry there will be a lot of uh, people uh, chanting saying bad things about your company and those people are called activists they're always activists for everybody people they actually I was going through one of the notes before and I, re I was reading an article and I read that there are people who do not want zoos the zoo in a country or anywhere they want the zoo to never exist they want, peop they want all the animals to go back to the jungle. How stupid is that? I mean, come on, we can argue it's not very fair for animals, but what is? At least they get food for free. They don't have to earn for it, right? That's what I'm talking about. But activists are your external st stakeholders. You need to take care of them. If you really s spoil everything, spoil the environment, then environmental... Activists will come and barge into your building. They'll kill you. Um, they won't kill you. They're not Al-Qaeda. But they will still really be bad for your company and for the image of the company. Uh, moving on. But if you still have any questions on clarifying. But this is an important topic. In your exam, they will really ask you uh, who is the connected stakeholder. And they'll give you an example. One, two, three, four, five. Who do you think is connected stakeholders from these people? So, you know, a good question. A very healthy question you need to take care of. Um, now stakeholder have groups like I said I'm gonna uh, but this thing I'm not really gonna go through you uh, over here that's that's it that's the part what are they really gonna talk about what did will they do and I think I've covered this previously briefly but you can go through this by yourself and if you have any questions just let me know and I'll come back to you on this matter final slide of to today's topic is Understanding the influence of stakeholder, the Mendeleev's matrix. 
Now, Matrix, I'm not talking about the movie Matrix, but it's the Mendelo's Matrix. Amazing, amazing thing. Not better than the movie, though. Moving down. So, the Mendelo's framework, or Matrix, I used to call it, uh, is supposed to have three different things. Power, interest, and influence. Now, what's the power? Now, when you're doing... We just say, hey, there's a customer buying one candy from my shop and there's a customer buying 500 candies from my shop. Who should I take care of? I mean, in this example, it's very obvious. You take care of the person who's buying 500 candies from you. But wait, there's still one person buying one candy from you. Can you take care of him as well? You should. You should do that. But how to know who are the stakeholders we should think about, who we should spend more time with? This is the framework, this is the matrix for them. Power, how much power do they have? How much, what damage can they do to the company if you don't take care of them? How, what's their interest? Are they even bothered about your company? Do they even care that you exist? I don't know, maybe yes, maybe no. Moving on, do they have any influence? Now influence is just power versus multiplied by interest, like what's the figure that comes to? Now I'll explain to you guys one by one. Here, as you can see, now, the first thing is, the power is low, the stakeholder's power is very low, the level of interest is very low as well. A clerk working in an office, now he is getting $1,000 a month. He saw, he, uh, he, now one of the persons working there, one of the employees put their paycheck over there, forgot to take it, and the clerk, while cleaning everything up or just looking through uh, some private documents of that employee, finds out that this employee earns 5000 now the clerk gets very offended that he's working more hours and stuff like that. He somehow had this feeling that, you know, I am going to kill them. I'm going to talk to the HR. He goes to the HR, he barges in there, kicks the door open, and he goes there and says, Dude, I need $2,000 my salary. I need $2,000 for my salary from next month onwards. He says, sorry, that's not going to happen. That's the market rate. You're just going to get 1000 That's it. Live with it. That's your life says, no, you need to give me 2000 or else I'll stop working. You know what the HR is going to say? Fine by me, go. Then he'll be crying on his knees saying sorry. But that's not going to work out because the person is already leaving. He already resigned. Or he's terminated because of his behavior. So what do you do with these type of stakeholders? Mis minimal effort. You don't care about them. They just exist over there. You don't care. They're just over there. Never mind them. Unless they start creating problems. If they create problems, just replace them. So it's easier to be replaced if you're a small person. That's why you should make yourself a big person. So if you're about to leave, the company gets a heart attack. Or at least your boss gets a heart attack. I mean, don't burn his office or anything to, get, to let him have get a heart attack. But, you know, get the, get the idea. Now, the level of interest is very high. But the power is low. Very, very often we have this scenario. We move to a company, we're working very hard, we're very interested in the company. Our interest levels are so high, we think, this is the best company I've worked for, I love this company, I want to work extra hours for free. You do overtime for free, you don't care. They're not paying you, they don't even care you exist. Because your power, you don't own any power. What do you do? You're just there. Nobody's looking at you, but you're still working overtime. You just keep them informed, you say, okay, you know what, just... You know their stakeholders, they are very, they're working, they're working for free. But they don't have any power, you don't care about them, you don't think too much about them. You just say, you know, whenever we make a decision, just tell that guy, he's too excited all the time. So you just go and tell that person, so keep them informed, simple. If they have low power, low interest, you don't do anything. If they have high interest, but no power, a low power, you just keep them informed, you just tell them what's happening in the company, just let them go. Now I'm going to change my example to employees to dog. Now you'll be like, what dog? But it's a good example, it's a very good example. I've been using it since 2013, so you're going to like it, I hope. Now the level of interest is low. But the power is high. Now I'll tell you, you your, your mom or your friends or anybody asks you to go down to the grocery store and get some uh, chips. Anything, any junk food that you guys want to eat with a movie. You go down, you buy the stuff, when you're walking back, you see there's a bulldog. A huge dog, just sitting over there. Now, do you think he's powerful? 
Yes, he is. Do you think his interest is low or high? Now he is sleeping. His interest is very high. What do you do? Just walk slowly beside him. You don't have to wake him up. His power is very high, but he doesn't care about you. He's sleeping. He's just sitting over there. He doesn't care. What do you do? You just go around him. You just keep him satisfied. He's sleeping. He's satisfied. He's dreaming about a bone or something. Fine. Let him do that. You just move past him. Simple. Keep him satisfied. Don't bully him. Don't give him that spark that will explode him. Just let him be. Just let him be. The next example. Same example. You're coming back. They have lots of power. They have a lot of interest in you. You are holding a piece of chicken. And that dog is hungry. You don't give that ch chicken to that dog. He eats you up. He's a bulldog. He's a fighter. He's standing up. He's looking into your eyes. You're terrified. He is not. His power is high. His interest is really high. What do you do? They are the key players. You let them do whatever they want. You throw the bone with the chicken over there. Let him eat it. You move past him. If they want something, do it. Meaning of this is that if there are people, for example, in real world, coming back to the keep satisfied scenario, who are these type of people? They are like your uh, uh, non-executive direct auditors. Okay, auditors. They have a lot of power. They can kill you. They can kick your butt. But they're not very interested in your internal company businesses and talk stuff like that. You can't say that you're fighting with your employees and stuff, right? No, that doesn't make sense. So just keep them satisfied. When the auditors come once a year, keep them happy. Take them out for lunch. Don't bribe them. But take them out for cheap lunch, lunches and stuff. You know, just keep them happy. Just let them be. But key players are the investors in a company. That guy invests $5 million every year in the company. He is 75% owner of your company. Do you think you're going to make him angry? No, he's going to bite you. And when I say bite, I don't mean bite. I mean he's going to take the money out of your company. You don't want to do that. So do not do that. So uh, having said that, I think I've spent enough time over here. And these are the explanations if you really want to read it. So go through the website and uh, read Mr. Richard's ex explanation as well. And uh, I'll let you guys decide whose explanation was better. Uh, and there's no comparison, by the way. It's just uh, a personal opinion on everything. So here I am uh, signing out. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you understand everything. And if should you really have any further questions, you have my email or you, you can talk to me in person as well if you get a chance. And uh, thank you very much. Goodbye.